I am what they call a townie. I was born in West Virginia. In fact, I was born at home on East Street in 1933. And since then, I obviously went to West Bridgewater schools, elementary, secondary. From there, uh, I went to Bridgewater State Teachers College. I have been involved in several town organizations and departments. I was a member of the school committee in the uh, late 60s. I served twice on the Council on Aging Committee, originally on the Founding Committee, and uh, then later on on the present committee and uh, the building that they have uh, down the street here. March of 1949, Howard High School burned. I was a freshman. Uh, once they got things settled, we ended up going to Bridgewater to the Hunt School from 2 o'clock in the afternoon to 6 o'clock at night. The class of 52 bore the brunt of that experience in that we went right through our senior year. So we were there for the balance of our freshman year, sophomore, junior, and senior year. We had uh, PM sessions, because they weren't, they were AM sessions, because they had to be, over at the Unitarian Church, and detention was at the Unitarian Church. Uh, those of us who participated in athletics and so forth, or any of the play rehearsals and that, all had to take place in the morning. Anyone in the college preparatory courses that were taking sciences had to go to Brockton High School, the old B building, on uh, Saturday mornings because we didn't have any labs available.
1971, I was hired as principal and served in that position through uh, 1993. In 1993, I was appointed as assistant superintendent of schools and continued in that position through 1996 when I retired. I think it's important to uh, realize that uh, you know, West Bridgewater is in the middle of building a new school. It's going to be the third high school in the history of the town. Uh, this year's class, I believe, is the 132nd graduating class. Uh, and it's important to remember that buildings don't educate. Uh, yes, they're a necessary evil, but it's how the students apply themselves. It's uh, the quality and devotion of the teachers and educators. And uh, hopefully that will continue uh, long after the next generation looks at this DVD. And uh, we'll still keep going because out of the two schools so far, there's been a lot of uh, good people. A lot of people have been very successful. Uh, and I think even with school choice, with uh, kids coming from towns that have brand new schools coming to even this building, says a lot about the quality of education that's presented in West Ridgewater. Well, certainly technology has advanced leaps and bounds from the time that I was here. Uh, 1971, if you look in one of the town reports, you will see that the town of West Bridgewater established a committee to investigate whether or not there should be data processing in the town. Uh, I think that's rather unique, although on the way in, I was talking to uh, the secretary, and she did inform me that the same telephone and the same intercom system is in the office now that was in the office in 1971. Uh, that's good usage. We did have uh, a number of programs which have been changed. Uh, we had uh, industrial arts for both the junior and senior high school, because we were junior senior high school. Uh, back in those days. They had a home economics program. Uh, they had woodworking, they had drafting. Based on the last five to ten years, or uh, 15 years actually, the changes in the school isn't as much in the growth as it's um, really been the change in the economy and, and what's um, out in the world. And it really stems back to more than 15 years that we've been trying to change the way that we educate our kids in West Bridgewater um, in a building that was built for a completely different type of education. It's just been tough to do in a building that was built um, halfway through the last century, which was built for a completely different reason. It was built for an industrial economy, not the knowledge um, information a global economy that we have right now and being that it was built for a different time it was really built more on a factory model and the factory model is that kids would sit in rows and a teacher would stand in front of them and put knowledge in their head and then they would get up and they would move to the next one and do the same thing and do the in on and on. DNA was discovered in 1953 the first graduating class from this high school was 1953 no one at that time would ever, ever have thought that you'd be able to isolate DNA in a high school lab. Well, we have been able to do that for a long time. And so it's hard for us to do all these high-tech things, have biotechnology, robotics, those types of things that no one could even picture were going to happen back in 1953. So we didn't set it up that way. That's really why that's really the growth and the change that's taken place. And it wasn't just the last 15 years, but probably the fastest change has been in the last 15 years, and that's really due to technology. We can't even anticipate. We're trying to anticipate, because in 60 years from now, okay, will this school be able to do what we need it to do for the kids in 60 years from now? No, we're trying to anticipate so that the building can be used as long as possible. I 
ladies and gentlemen, students of West Bridgewater. Today starts a new chapter for the town of West Bridgewater and all of its students. Just think, as we all know, Dr. Oakley and her staff are already recognized by the state for giving each and every one of our students the best education that they can get. And it shows year after year with our MCAS scores and how 90% of them continue to college. With the new school, who knows? We might reach 100% going to college, and I do hope so. So we're trying to take, we want to prepare kids for that information, knowledge economy, and the global economy. And it's very hard to do in the current building we have because this, it, we're limited with that. Mm -hmm. And that school served us very well. It served the baby boomers very well in its heyday. Um, but it's past its prime now. And it's nobody's fault. It's just, how could you anticipate? No one, I mean, think about anticipating the technology we have today. The one thing that we want to take with us from the old building, besides some of our relics that we're going to bring over, <laughs> but the one major thing that we want to make sure we have in the new building is the small school feel, the personalization. But every person that comes here they say that they come for the personalization, they come for the small school. That's West Bridgewater's strength, and that's what makes us different from a lot of schools. Thank you. 